You know, we have a we have a pretty big uh, interview here today. We have uh, you know international recording superstar Lauren Mayhew here on the line with us. How are you doing today, Lauren? I'm excellent. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, we have a lot of questions for you. You know, going back, you know, your experience in television, movies, obviously your music, which is your main venture now. Um, but this is a wrestling show as well, so we have a few questions on that. So if you don't mind, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so were you a wrestling fan growing up? And if so, who were some of your favorites? Um, you know what? I did watch wrestling when I was a kid, probably around like, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. And, you know, I remember, you know, growing up with The Rock and Hulk Hogan. And um, I think it was something that I kind of got into because all the cutest boys at school were really into wrestling. So when I'd go over to their house, like, to just hang out, they were always watching it. So I think kind of by default I was uh, I was just like a tag-along fan. Um, but then I actually got to really enjoy it. Um, growing up after that, I didn't watch much wrestling. But I'll tell you something, that, you know, the second that I, I got the job on WWE, I got completely immersed into it, and I have to say that I have a lot of respect for the wrestlers. I mean, what they do, it's, it's pretty amazing. They're amazing athletes. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll definitely go into some detail on that later. But, um, you know, you started acting at the age of eight. You know, as a young child, was that what you wanted to do, or was that something that was sort of thrust on, onto you? Definitely was not thrust onto me. My, my mom and my dad, my dad's an orthopedic surgeon, and my mom's a nurse, so they're not involved in the entertainment industry at all whatsoever. Um, it's something that I just loved and that I, um, you know, wanted to get into on my own. And uh, once I had my first taste of it, um, I, you know, I was hooked. I was um, on a kid's show when I was young on PBS, and I was a series regular on the show, and I did 64 episodes. And after that, I short, um, shortly after that, I got a, um, a guest star. I mean, I'm sorry, not a guest star, a series regular role on Guiding Light in New York. And so I lived partly in New York and partly in Florida. And, um you know, it just it just catapulted from there, really. Hello? Okay, it seems like we might have a bad connection. Um, but uh, you know, my next question is, uh, you know, how did uh, um, you know you, one of your early roles? You were uh, you were cast in uh, General, uh, I think it was General Hospital or a daytime soap opera. How did that come about? It was actually Guiding Light, and um, Guiding you know, Light. I. Yeah, Guiding Light. And I had gotten that because um, I had entered this uh, modeling contest uh, for Wilhelmina Models when I was a kid, and I ended up um, winning and getting flown to New York. Um, and, uh, and when I was there, I met with a whole bunch of different managers, one of them being the management company that I worked with, and um, they sent me out on an audition for Guiding Light, and um, I booked it. And so from there on out, I basically traveled back and forth from to New York and Florida probably like five times a month because my family – still lived in Florida, and I was still going to school in Florida, so it was a lot of traveling. <laughs> so even with, like, the, the acting and everything, you were still going to, like, like school full-time in the middle of that as well? Yes, I was. It wasn't until um, I started, when I got signed to Epic Sony and started opening up for Britney Spears and NSYNC and Destiny's Child, um, finally around then, that's when I ended up getting a tutor, but during that whole time, I still went to regular school, so my parents um, definitely put, like, a pretty high value on education, so they wanted to make sure that I still got the best education I could. Okay, now, um, why, what was the reason that you transitioned from acting to uh, to music? Well, actually, it, it wasn't so much a transition as is something that I've um, I've always been doing both of them at the same time. I mean, ever since I was young, I've always had a passion for music and, you know, a passion for acting as well. And even still now, I'm, I'm continuing to do both. It just kind of depends. Like, you know, sometimes I'm doing more with music just because of the opportunities that have put themselves out there. Sometimes I'm doing more with acting, but I'm, I'm currently working on both. So, um, you know, it's definitely something that I think one kind of helps the other. Okay, now you were talking a few minutes ago about about uh, you used to tour with with uh, groups like uh, Destiny's Child and NSYNC and with Britney Spears. Do you have any uh, maybe some funny stories from the road with them that you'd like to share with our listeners? Sure. Um, yeah. Well, one thing, uh, the Destiny's Child tour was so much fun because um, the girls were awesome. They used to coordinate like um, fun outings for like all the crew and like all the other performers and stuff like that. And I remember just going roller skating with all the girls and like um, going bowling and like just they were super competitive. And we'd always <laughs> we'd always just uh, you know play against each other and like you know then play against the crew and then uh, we just had an absolute blast. They were super sweet. Um, probably another like a funny story I guess is. Um, I remember I was, I think it was in 
Charlotte, and um, I was always the one to kind of hype up the crowd and introduce everyone, and I was pretty good. I mean, we were in a different city every night, but I pretty much always got it on, and um, I, I think I said, like, Richmond or something like that, and I was like, oh, my God, like, the second that I said it, and, like, the crowd kind of, like, looked around like, uh, what? And I was like, I mean, I mean, it was pretty, it was actually more so mortifying at the time than, like, terrifying, but now I can look back at it and just kind of laugh. <laughs> Uh, that's funny because uh, I live in Richmond. <laughs> oh, do you? So yeah, I guess Richmond yeah. was on the brain. I don't, I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, definitely let me know when you're coming if you come back this way. Now, uh, you've also performed in the pre-show for Super Bowl Thirty Five. Do you have any memories of uh, of that experience? Oh, definitely. That was amazing. Um, I'd have to say that's by far um, the favorite thing that I ever did for my dad um, because he got, like, first row, like, Super Bowl tickets. Um, I actually watched the whole game from the field, which is probably something that very few people can ever say that they've done. And it was pretty amazing. Um, I think the coolest thing about that was, uh, you know, not even so much the game as it was when we walked off the stage. We went backstage, um, like, right before the halftime show started. We saw um, uh, Steven Tyler walking out onto the stage, and he was just getting ready to perform. And he comes up to us, and he's like, I just want to tell you girls rock. I was like, whoa, Steven Tyler just told us that we rock. (laughs) It was pretty cool. Wow, that's on the – Definitely not many people get the the opportunity to hear. Um, How did you begin? uh, Shortly after that, you were appearing on other artist videos, uh, Mandy Moore, and uh, some of the others. Don't I can't think of right now. How did how did that come about? Well, Mandy Moore was actually our label mate. We were both signed to Epic Sony. So um, that was just kind of set up, set up by our label. But I had actually been friends with Mandy um, ever since we were kids. We did a, a pilot together, a TV show together, when we were even younger, before she had even come out with her music. And that's kind of how that all started. Hello? Well, yes, uh, you know, we're, we're still here. Um you, uh, shortly after that, you started doing uh, feature films, and you were in the film uh, Raise Your Voice with Hilary Duff. Uh, how did you get in touch with the, with the producers there? What was that experience like? Well, actually, um, how I got that part was um, just auditioning, just like any other part that I would go out for. Um, I basically, you know, I, I went in, um, my agency set me up on an audition. I went in, I met with the producers, I read with Hillary, and um, they loved me. I guess I have that mean girl thing down. <laughs> Um, The experience of actually shooting the film was a lot of – we shot most of it in downtown L.A., which was a blast. And um, Hillary was a pleasure to work with. Um, The cast was amazing. I mean, there was also David Keith and Rebecca De Mornay, um, you know, uh, like a lot – John Corbett, like a lot of great actors, you know, that were in in the film. So it was really fun to work with all of them. All right, I'm going to kick it back to uh, JT. He has some questions for you. Okay, great. Now, you began doing solo work in 2006. What caused you to break out on your own? You know, um, this type of music that I'm doing now is kind of like rock music, like Joan Jett kind of 80s style rock mixed with, you know, new age kind of like uh, electronic Lady Gaga type beats. And I feel like this is definitely more me than, um, you know, the type of music that we were doing um, in PYT and the type of stuff I did before with my band. And, um, you know, it's just kind of like the natural evolution of things, I guess. Um, You know, when I left the band, um, you know, to come out to L.A. to do more acting, um, you know, the acting started taking off. And then um, it kind of started with me writing music for TV and films, and especially for the TV shows and the films that I was in. So it started off with that, and then it just kind of catapulted, and I started performing out here and realized that I had something, so I just kind of ran with it. Now, you've been uploading a lot of videos to your YouTube, of course, that are music videos, and of course, the the newest one is What You Don't Know. Would you say that this is probably your best piece of work, or what can fans expect from the future? Um, you know, this is something that uh, right now I'm uh, I'm currently, like, getting all my music together to go and take a whole bunch of label meetings and really take my music to the next level. I already have a dance remix um, song that's been released through Universal Distribution that's actually out on the radio and been playing at a bunch of different um, dance radio stations and stuff like that already. Um, but this song, actually, I, I got together with some amazing friends of mine, my friend Mark Hapka, who's in um, Days of Our Lives and um, has been in a bunch of different movies and TV shows, and my friend Matt Mullins, who um, is on a ABC. ABC uh, family show called Common Writer, and uh, we all got together and uh, had one a cinematographer friend of mine um, shoot a music video for me, and so it's amazing quality, and it's um, a really cool concept. It's kind of like a take on Mr. and Mrs. Smith, 
um, or like my own version of it, basically. And, uh, yeah, I definitely think it's the, the video that I'd be promoting right now and that I'm really proud of, but I think that it's only going to get better in the future. Now, how did it uh, come, or how did it come to be for you to work for WWE? Um, that was kind of a crazy situation. I actually got told about the audition for WWE um, from a manager um, whose client I work with in the movie that's out right now on Showtime. It's called Frat Party, and I'm a, I'm a supporting lead in the movie. And the manager of, of one of the other girls in the film had told me, he was like, you know, Lauren, I know you sing and you host and all this other stuff. Like, you know, the WWE is looking for a new face, a new MC. And I was like, really? I was like, you know, and I didn't really know that much about it. And, you know, I, I'd known, you know, uh, who Lillian was, but, you know, I, I hadn't really seen her do her thing that much. So I started, you know, checking it out. And I was like, you know what, I'll, I'll never turn down a meeting. Let's do this. So I went in there and met with them. They were super, super nice. They loved me. They flew me out to New York. Um, I did a screen test there. And then about a month later, um, I heard that I, I got the part, that I got the gig. Now, after you got the gig, did you intend to stay with the wrestling business and learn the craft, or was it more like a small venture that you were trying to do? You know what? You never know, like, when you first start something, like, where it's going to take you. Um, my experience with the WWE was a very, very positive one, and it's something that, you know, I would ven definitely venture back to, you know, go and do again at some point in the future. It's just that, uh, you know, I never know where my, you know, career is going to take me, and there's, you know, certain other things that I also wanted to focus on being also my acting and my music. So, um, you know, I, you know, it's it's definitely not a far-fetched to think that I will be back on the WWE sometime in the future, but um, just right now I'm really focusing on my music and my acting, so. Now, what are your feelings on other wrestling personalities such as Mickey James, Maria Kanellis, and Lita um, turning over and starting to do music as well? I think that's awesome. I think that's great. I mean, so many of the, the divas and the, you know, the WWE superstars are talented in so many ways and so many areas. And, um, you know, I think that, that only helps the WWE brand, and I think that's great that they're, uh, you know, using their already uh, popular fan base to, you know, reach other outlets and markets. I, I say more power to them. Now, my co-host, Andrew, has a couple questions, so Andrew, go ahead. Okay. Now, um, did you ever have, in your, in your time with WWE, did you ever have the opportunity to meet Maria Canales or Mickey James? And if so, what was your impressions? Um, I did meet Mickey James, and um, she was very sweet to me. She's a really cool girl. She's uh, super, um, you know, serious about her craft and about what she does, and um, I think she's super professional and uh, does a great job. Did, did she ask you for any advice with the going into the recording or anything like that? You know, we did talk about her music once in a while, and she had told me um, that she wanted to, you know, play some stuff for me. Unfortunately, I never got to hear it. We we kept telling each other we were going to switch our music over and give each other CDs, and we never got around to it. So hmm. that's something that I should probably still do, write her a message and send it to her. <laughs> now, you know, you were only in WWE for a little bit under two months, but in your time there, um, who, who there was uh, probably the most friendly and more most willing to you know help you learn and improve with what you were doing? You know what? Everyone had their own way of helping me. Like you know, some ways I felt more helpful than others. But um, everyone was pretty cool. I'd have to say. I'm trying to think of who uh, was probably like the most. Uh, Ted DiBiase was super super cool to me. He was amazing. Um, uh, who else? Natasha um, was absolutely amazing. Um, who else? Uh, you know, honestly, like, just a lot of people. Ray Mysterio was really cool. Um, I had a lot of people that were just, you know, really great to me. Was there anyone that was really just just kind of walking around grumbling and didn't really offer you anything, didn't really speak or anything like that? Um, there were a, a few people that, like, not, they weren't grumbling or they were like, – everyone was nice. You know, everyone, you know, everyone was nice. But there were some people who were, you know, definitely not as friendly as others, you know, for sure. But um, – you know, I think it, you know it's one of those things that you know some people are just super outgoing from the get go, and some people you have to get to know a little bit better. So it's just one of those things. But um, I actually, I my episodes were only aired for about two months, but I was actually with the WWE for about four months. Um, the first like two months, I was doing um, just dark matches, but I was touring with them and performing with them and singing the anthem and stuff with them, which I actually was pretty grateful that I had that time first and you know foremost because um you know it's definitely very different you know than anything else I've ever done hosting wise or singing wise, so it was great to be able to have that practice and be able to do a bunch of dark matches and you know singing and getting used to the crowd before you know they put all my stuff live. 
And while you while you were on TV with them, you were uh, you were the ring announcer primarily. Um, did uh, and you know you were with ECW, so they would you would tour with the uh, SmackDown brand. Did uh, did you get any advice from anyone like Tony Chimmel or anything like that? Of course, Tony was absolutely amazing. He helped me out a ton. Um, so that was amazing. Also, Justin Roberts uh, was a, a massive, massive help. Um, the two of them probably helped me the most. Um, I mean, obviously, because, you know, we're the only ones who do the same thing. So they really helped a lot. Now, did you ever get the chance to uh, meet Vince McMahon? And if so, what were your impressions of him? Of course. Um, actually, you know, Vince, the first day that I got there, you know, came up and introduced himself to me. And, um, you know, I have to say I have a lot of respect for him. I mean, you know, to run an empire like the WWE and do it with such class, it's pretty impressive. I also um, really enjoy the fact that he gets so involved with actually the show's tapings in the sense that, like, he's a part of the storyline and he's there. And I think that that's really, really cool. Um, you know, he he does a lot, you know. And uh, obviously, I mean, just the success of the WWE alone shows what an amazing businessman he is. And he was very kind to me, so. Okay. And, um what would you say is like, is it your, your fondest memory of your of your time with WWE? Um, I would say probably one of the the funniest times that I'll remember back, um, which the guys were kind of doing as like a joke or a prank on me was um, um, Batista and um, the Undertaker were um, doing a match. And um, I think it was uh, The Undertaker who threw Batista um, out of the ring, like right near to where I was sitting ringside. And um, I moved out of the way because I'm like, oh, my God, you know, like Batista's being hurled at my head. So I, like, ru- I run out of the way, and I'm, like, hiding behind this bodyguard. And, like, it's, like, everywhere I move, it's, like, they kept throwing each other in my direction, which I finally kind of started getting that they were, like, kind of playing, like, a prank on me, like, while they were fighting. And I was like, this is ridiculous. I ended up literally being chased around the entire ring, like in five inch stilettos, I'm like hauling butt around the whole ring. And I remember just like slamming into the side of the wall and like seeing this one kid, like I look up at him, like, and he's like, you know, in the audience, he's one of the fans. And he's like, he just goes, run. (laughs) I literally almost got (laughs) out by the undertaker. And uh, I finally just like ran to the side and I like hid behind one of the bodyguards in the side. And I was like, dear Jesus. Okay. (laughs) I'm about to be pummeled, um, but um, I made it out <laughs> unscathed, um, thank goodness. But it was pretty funny. Now, um, you know, you, you said earlier that uh, you, it was a pretty amical split with you in WWE and you may go back. Um, would you be opening to returning maybe in, in TNA, or if you were to return, is it would you would you prefer to go to WWE? Um, I think I prefer to go to WWE only because, you know, it's the brand that I started with. And, you know, um, obviously, like, I, I, I formed a rapport with all the people that I was working with. But um, I wouldn't be against um, TNA either. Um, you know, it's just that, you know, I, I think when you when you already start with something and you've formed a rapport and a little bit of a family bond, you know, you obviously have, like, a, a little soft spot for that. But I'd be open to either. Now, outside of, you know, what you're doing right now with the music and, uh, you know, the the acting and everything, are there any other business ventures that you're uh, involved in? Um, Mostly just uh, the acting and the music, although I am hosting as well. And it looks like um, I just got a a new role as the host for the IPPA, which is the International Poker Players Association. And it looks like I'll start start hosting um, some of the the touring matches, the qualifying games uh, to – the final World Series of Poker, which shoots in Monte Carlo. Um, so that looks pretty amazing, and um, I should hopefully be starting that pretty soon. Okay, now I, I had heard that you were uh, involved with uh, a charity called the Alliance for Eating Disorders Awareness. Is that true? And if so, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure, um, definitely. I mean, you know, being in the business that I'm in, there's a lot of pressure on, you know, actors and, you know, musicians and even wrestlers, you know, to maintain a certain body image and a certain – um, size and shape and everything else like that. And I just feel that, like, you know, it's really important um, to, to be healthy. And, you know, everyone's healthy weight is different for each individual. So I just wanted to be a part of that organization because I thought that it sent a really good message of, you know, um, that, you know, whatever is healthy and natural for you, that that's, like, you know, that's beautiful too. So um, um, that's why I, I joined up with them, and I just thought it was a great cause, and they, they do a lot of great work. And I've done a lot of performances with them and, uh, you know, uh, fundraisers and stuff, and they're a great group. Okay, now um, where where can fans find some some of your music? 
Um, you can find it on iTunes. There's a bunch of EPs up on iTunes. Um, my new dance remix single that's uh, released through Universal Distribution is out there. Um, also, What You Don't Know, which with a new music video um, that you can check out on YouTube, um, which is just on my YouTube channel, which is just backslash Lauren Mayhew. Um, you can also find stuff on my website, which is www.laurenmayhew.com. And, uh, or, you know, you can also follow me on Twitter, which is just at LC Mayhew. So uh, those are the – and following me on Twitter is always good because you always know when a, a new release is coming out or when something is, you know, uh, being put out there. Uh, actually, what you don't know, that song is um, on MTV's Taking the Stage. I have a bunch of songs that have been on The Hills and on The City and on Taking the Stage, on VH1's Keeping with the Kardashians, um, on Oxygen Network's The Bad Girls Club. So you can hear my music on a lot of TV shows and films as well. Now, do you have any uh, any messages you'd like to give to your fans who may be listening to this? Um, I'd just like to say uh, thank you so much uh, for supporting me and um, get excited for the next chapter because it's only going to get better. <laughs> and finally, do you have anything else coming on that you want to promote or anything else you'd just like to talk about? Um, the only thing, other thing I'd say is that you can tune in um, on Showtime or the movie channel to my teen comedy that's out there. It's um, it's called Frat Party, and I'm a supporting lead in it, and it's, a, it's it was a lot of fun to shoot. I also have two songs that were in the movie, so you can hear some mayhem music and also catch Lauren Mayhew, me as the actress, um, on there doing my thing. Okay, I'm uh, looking forward as we speak. Um, now, was th was there anything else that you uh, that you'd like to talk about, or any or just any any last statements? I don't think so. I think you guys covered it all. Check me out on iTunes. Follow me on Twitter. Okay. Well, thank you so much for uh, coming coming on and uh, and talking with us for a little bit. And uh, you know, we'll definitely be playing some of your songs here on our show. Awesome. You guys rock. Thank you.